Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. Today we shall be discussing about another application of remote sensing and GIS that is the land resources management. So, so far you, have, you already know the basic concepts of remote sensing, GPS as well as GIS. So, today in this module we shall be talking about the importance of land resources, the areas where our geospatial technology can contribute and the application of remote sensing and GIS in land resource management. So, by the end of this module you would be aware about the importance of uh, land resources, the application of remote sensing and GIS and the advantages and the limitations of these methods over conventional methods. So, let us start. To begin with, the land is a scarce resource due to the immense agricultural and demographic pressure on it. Hence, information on land use, land cover, the possibilities for their optimal use is essential for the selection, planning and implementation of land use schemes to meet the increasing demand for basic human needs and welfare. The information on land characteristics and distribution also assess in monitoring the dynamics of land use resulting out of a changing demands for increasing population. Nations, village communities as well as individual land users need to make the best choices among options for the use of land in order to support the development without the issue of land degradation which would endanger sustainable production of food and other rural products. Land information system has emerged as a powerful tool management and analysis of the large amount of basic data information that could be statistical, spatial or temporal that is needed to generate in a flexible and integrated manner the information products in the form of maps as well as tabular and text, text reports for land use decisions. Now, coming to the importance of land resources, land includes all the natural environmental resources contained on the earth surface such as soil, water, terrain, climate and weather. Human welfare and socio-economic development depends on the capability of land resources to provide food, fiber, timber, fuel and other raw materials besides many other plant and animal products and shelter and recreation. Pressure on land is increasing everywhere and the need to achieve a balance between the exploitation and conservation of land resources have made rational use of resources. The pressure on land is increasing everywhere and there is a need to achieve a balance between the exploitation and conservation of land resources and this requires rational use of resources and management at all levels. Global and regional institutions as well as individual countries also need to look at the present and future requirements for produce and goods from available land resources and how to satisfy these requirements consider considering them against the possibilities and constraints of sustainable production from these resources. So, land resource management is also linked to sustainable development. Coming to the historical perspective, the history of remote sensing dates back to as early as 1827 when Nisefor Naipik took the first picture of nature. Since then, the advancement of technology continued with the use of a captive balloon in 1858, pigeons in 1903, low altitude aircraft during first world war and high altitude aircraft in 1950s to take the aerial photographs. The satellite remote sensing era began when television infrared observation satellite Teros-1, the first meteorological satellite was launched in 1960. In India, the remote sensing and space technology has been realized effectively since 1960s. The utilization of aerial photographs in India gathered momentum with the establishment of Indian Photo Interpretation Institute that was renamed as the Indian Institute of Remote Sensing in 1983 under the Survey of India for imparting training in 
aerial remote sensing techniques. Indian remote sensing satellite system has the world's largest constellation of remote sensing satellites in operation, which provides leadership and continuity in earth observations through an operational earth observation infrastructure. Currently, there are almost 10 satellites in operation that include Cartosat 1 and 2, Cartosat 2B, IRS 1C, 1D, P3, Oceansat 1, 2, Resosat 1 and Technology Experiment Satellite. Now, coming to the methods in remote sensing that are used for uh, assessment of land resources, the first requirement is image data. So, the remote sensing image data can be used from different satellites such as land remote sensing satellite Landsat with a spatial resolution of 30 meters, linear imaging self scanning uh, sensors LIST 3 with a resolution of 23.5 meters and advanced space bond thermal emission radiometer reflection radiometer with a spatial resolution of 15 meters. These images provide suitable cloud free spatial coverage with relatively high spatial and spectral resolutions. The next one is geometric correction. Accurate registration of multispectral remote sensing data is essential for analyzing land use and land cover conditions of a particular geographic location. The geometric correction of remote sensing data is done for distortions and degradation caused by errors due to the variation in altitude, velocity of sensor platform, variation in scan speed and in the sweep of sensors field of view, earth curvature and relief displacement. The images are georeferenced using polyconic projections with root mean square error and Landsat 7 enhanced thematic matter enhanced thematic mapper and other satellite data are reprojected. The next requirement is ground reference data. As you know in image analysis ground reference data plays an important role to determine the information classes, interpret decisions and assess the accuracy of the results. Substantial reference data and a thorough knowledge of the geographical area is required at this stage. The next is classification scheme. The classification schemes provide framework for organizing and categorizing information that can be extracted from image data. So, a proper classification scheme includes classes that are both important to the study and discernible from the data on hand. Image enhancement, contrast stretching and false color composites are worked out and the interpretation of images is carried out using various interpretation keys such as, such as shape, size, pattern, tone, texture, shadow, location, site, association and resolution. So, coming to the classification techniques of satellite images, the overall objective of image classification is to automatically categorize all the pixels in an image into land cover classes or themes. So, the classes can be, so this requires that the classes should be distinguished in an image and they should have different spectral characteristics as well. This can be analyzed by comparing the spectral reflectances of pixels. Image classification gives results to a certain level of reliability that needs to be confirmed with the ground reference data. The principle of image classification is that a pixel is assigned to a class based on the feature vector by comparing it to predefined clusters in the feature space. So, accordingly there are two types of classification techniques unsupervised and supervised. Unsupervised classification approaches an automated classification method that creates a thematic raster layer from a remotely sensed image by letting the software identify the statistic identify the statistical patterns in the data without using any ground truth data. In supervised classification, the analyst supervises the pixel categorization process by specifying to the computer algorithm numerical descriptions of various land cover types present in the image. Training samples that describe the typical spectral pattern of land cover classes are defined. 
the and pixels in the image are then compared numerically to the training samples and are labeled to land cover classes that have similar characteristic. The next approach is fuzzy supervised classification approach. It allows for multiple and partial class memberships at the level of individual pixels and accommodate the fuzziness in all the three stages of a supervised classification. This approach considers that each pixel might belong to several different classes without definite boundaries. After classification, it becomes essential to carry out accuracy assessment analysis. In thematic mapping, this accuracy assessment is used typically to express the degree of correctness of a map or classification. A thematic map derived with a classification may be considered accurate if it provides an unbiased representation of the land cover of the region it portrays. In essence, therefore, classification accuracy is typically taken to mean the degree to which the derived image classification agrees with reality or confirms to the truth. A set of reference pixels representing geographic points on the classified image is required for accuracy assessment. Randomly selected reference pixels lessen or eliminate the possibility of such bias. A random stratified sampling method is generally used to prepare the ground reference data and the method al allocates the sample size for each land use based on its spatial extent. So, this is the flow diagram for generation of a map of land resources. As you can see in this method, how the raw data after geometric correction and generating the areas of interest by means of uh, ground reference data followed by visual interpretation and erosional classes helps us in preparing the final land use land cover map. It also includes the collateral data such as slope data, uh, land use map and soil map besides topo sheets obtained from survey of India and ground truth data. After this, let us talk about the land use classification system. Different classes of land use uh, and land covers such as settlements, forest, agriculture, wasteland, etc. are classified by any of the means of classification. By comparing the data of two different time intervals, the rates of increase, decrease or percent change can be estimated for each land use class. This map and database generated from the technique itself has wide applications such as land use planning or flood management. Land use mapping and distribution is also done by supervised maximum likelihood classification scheme uh, for two or more images and the final classification products thus provide an overview of the major land use land cover features of land for two time intervals for various classes such as water bodies, forest reserve, built up area, vegetation or farmland. So, coming to land resource management, it requires information on soil characteristics, slope and degree of roughness, surface and groundwater availability and slope and relief features, land cover, land use characteristics, biological conditions such as disease or insect infestation of crops grassland and forest land, urban development, etc. So, the geospatial technologies such as remote sensing, GIS or GPS have various applications in land resource management. These include assessment of land suitability and productivity, land use planning, land degradation assessment, quantification of constraints in land resources and quantification of constraints in land resource management agricultural technology transfer, agricultural inputs recommendation, analysis and development of farming systems, environmental impact assessment, monitoring the development of land resources, agroecological characterization for research planning, agroeconomic zoning for land development, nature conservation and management and research for ecosystems. So, the next topic is integrated mission for sustainable development. 
dear students as you know the natural resource management for sustainable development is a major study undertaken by the department of space to provide practical solutions to such problems of land uh, to problems of land uh, resources through the satellite remote sensing technology this study has been taken up in about 174 districts all over the country covering nearly 45% of the geographical area this aims to generate spatial database on various themes of natural resources to integrate and analyze them for arriving at sustainable agro based land use alternatives these maps serve as vital inputs for policy makers in the planning and implementation of development activities related to watershed management so under this program of imsd during the drought of 1987 all over the country a remote sensing approach was utilized to explore the possibility of obtaining solutions for drought mitigations after satisfactory results this scheme was later extended to land and water development through integrated approach on watershed basis in this method three season satellite data was interpreted on a scale of 1 is to 50000 with the help of survey of india topo sheets to prepare thematic maps additionally socio economic and rainfall data were also gathered and depicted and depicted on 1 is to 2 lakh 50000 scale besides drainage and watershed information was extracted from survey of india topo sheets with additional inputs from satellite data for upgradation this imsd program as i already mentioned covered about 175 districts representing diverse terrain agro climatic zones and social practices so the detailed action plan for the above identified watersheds in these in these 175 districts was prepared which included demarcation of sites for the following first is construction of rainwater harvesting structures implementation of soil conservation measures identification of areas suitable for afforestation agroforestry agro horticulture and fuel wood as well as fodder development it also includes evolution of appropriate methods for sand dune stabilization and identification of appropriate local specific agricultural practices for maximizing food grains the action plans have been critically evaluated by the expert committees for taking up implementation work for benefiting the people at the grassroots level besides this another important aspect is land information system it provides up to date records of land tenure land value land use ownership details etc in both textural and graphic formats in this system the land parcel that is the boundary of land or survey boundary is the principal unit around which the collection storage and retrieval of information is operated the information contained in a cadastral system makes it possible to identify the extent and level of development and management of land to make effective plans for the future with the availability of high resolution data from satellites such as indian remote sensing satellite 1c 1d and cartosat the satellite data with integration of cadastral boundaries helps us in generating information in greater details and to facilitate the updating of existing records they also serve as useful inputs in prioritizing implementation of area development plans and their effective monitoring so after all this let us look at the advantages of, of geospatial technology over conventional methods the remote sensing techniques provide a synoptic view of large areas which is not possible by conventional and ground survey methods the satellite data is received periodically which helps us in updating the information and monitoring the changes at short intervals remote sensing also has a unique capability of recording data in visible as well as invisible parts of the electromagnetic spectrum such as ultraviolet infrared thermal infrared or microwave portions therefore certain phenomena which cannot be seen by the human eye 
can be observed through remote sensing techniques be it temperature or be it data related to mapping of ground resources. It is therefore, evident that although the conventional methods of data collection are essential, they should be supplemented by, by remote sensing techniques for cost and time efficiency. Despite its significance, there are certain practical drawbacks also of geospatial technology. For example, the light has a limited ability to penetrate the water and atmosphere. As a result, the process of absorption, transmission as well as reflection, they, they reduce the signals that reach the, they reduce the intensity of signals reaching the sensors. Besides, there are certain data gaps, for example, certain availability of right data at the right time is restricted. Cloud cover also is an is also a limitation particularly for biodiversity and land cover applications in tropics. So, uh, there also exist regional disparities in data access and in the skills needed to interpret the image. Data cost although is reduced uh, over ground survey methods, still it is particularly significant for high resolution images. Also the cost of ground truthing is cannot be uh, cannot be removed in totality as remote sensing is seldom sufficient in its own right. Also there is a current lack of international institution to coordinate among space agencies. The interpretation and analysis of geospatial data requires skilled and committed manpower or labor which is also a limitation. So dear students at the end of the module I hope you would be able to understand the importance of land resources, you would also be able to go through the historical perspectives of how geospatial technology has helped us in effective conservation of land resources. You would also appreciate the various methodologies and data sets that we discussed for carrying out monitoring of land resources in conjunction with uh, collateral data that is required for uh, management of land resources. Also, you would be able to appreciate the fact how GIS is used in conjunction with uh, remote sensing to provide us suitable maps and carrying out various studies related to land resource management. All in all, you would also be able to appreciate the importance of these geospatial technology such as remote sensing, GIS and GPS over the conventional methods of ground based studies. I hope you all are benefited from this module. Thank you.